you, I will give over to my uh, colleague, Mr. Eugene Opperman, and he will deal with the rights and recourses um, for applicants in the case where they uh, file the maintenance application or they are um, at the maintenance court and they don't get the assistance or they get a root maintenance officer to deal with. He will tell you how you deal with that uh, specific uh, person in case uh, you are grieved by that uh, specific person's attitude towards you. So over to Mr. Eugene Opperman. Thank you, guys. Uh, welcome from my side as well. Um, for you guys to be here on a Saturday morning and offer up your time it actually shows commitment um, that you are willing to learn and to tap on our knowledge that we so freely give. Um, like Advocate Rater said, yes, we will be talking about the rights and recourses. What is your rights in terms of a maintenance, in terms of the Maintenance Act? Uh, we will be speaking about the DOJ Code 26 of 2015 and just the complaints procedure. Once you have rights, if you have a right in any event, there's always a complaints procedure that needs to be followed. And then we'll briefly talk about the reviews and appeals on maintenance matters. And that would lead into Advocate Mohammed's uh, talk about the case that he did, and as well as Advocate Reiter's um, his presentation with regards to civil attachments and then ending up with, with felicity uh, in continuance of the Port Heater case. So, yeah, um, rights and recourses when it comes to maintenance. It's big words, but what does it mean? My experience the past week with regards to maintenance, maintenance courts, maintenance officers was one of absolute peer frustration and then i looked back and i started reading up on you know what where did it all start i'm not going to bore you with some details of where did it start and, and and what was the origin it all started off let's start off as a starting point with the maintenance act that came into operation in 1998 and soon afterwards, there was a case of Ballantyne versus Ballantyne. And in that court case, and that was just after this miraculous maintenance act was enforced or enacted, where the court said that despite the good intentions embodied in the maintenance act, logistical difficulties in maintenance courts mean that the maintenance system does not function properly or not effectively. How true is that? That was a constitutional court ruling that was handed down in 2002. That was shortly after the act was enacted, the maintenance act was enacted. So then by that time, they, were, they were already realized that something's a mess. Something is wrong. Something is not right. And then afterwards, in uh, 2014, quite a number of years ago, quite a number of years after the Valentine case, there were submissions done to the South African Legal Reform Commission. That was a document, Project 100, um, and it was an issue paper 28, where they submitted to the South African Law Reform Commission lists, documents, recommendations on how to change the maintenance system. And I'll give you a couple of examples in a minute. After that was done in 2014, the bottom line there was, you know what, this, the Maintenance Act is in serious need of a revamp. I'll get to that in a moment. Subsequent to the paper that was issued by the, to the South African Law um, uh, Legal Review Commission, they listened. For some weird and wonderful reason, they listened. And then the Maintenance Amendment Act was done in 2015, and there was an amendment to the regulations in 2017. So now you can see the long process that it takes from 1998 when the Maintenance Act was enacted up until 2017 when something was done. Only then. Isn't it about time that we change it now? So yes, frustration. I can give you a couple of examples of my frustration in court just today or not today during the course of the week. I was at a local magistrate court. Uh, doing an ex parte, and Dylan will, 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 will emphasize on that with, with civil uh, attachments. I did a 
ex parte application in terms of section 27. And then the magistrate in front said that, you know what, it is his belief. It is his belief that the respondent needs to get notice of a warrant of execution to be issued. So I said, you know what, with all due respect, your worship, we're in a court of law, not in a church. Keep your beliefs out of it. You've got a certain set of rules that you need to abide by, and that is the magistrate threat. You cannot go on beliefs. So we entered into a very heated argument. Um, I'm, I'm accustomed to screaming at people in court, uh, if, be it a magistrate, be it a maintenance officer, be it a opposing parties or whatever. So I can raise my voice and I can get quite passionate because I am. You know what he said? He said, you know what? That's it. So I referred him to a case that, that popped up and was, was ruled upon three weeks ago where the High Court actually said in the VDB case where it said that, you know what? It could be done. And then the magistrate looked at me and he said, but you know what? If you know so much about maintenance, why don't you become a maintenance officer? I nearly lost it. I nearly lost it. That was our frustration. Then I also have a Facebook group, same as Felicity, and we have a WhatsApp group and everything, and we attend to the queries of people, of mothers standing in a queue, waiting to be helped at certain courts. And you know what? They're not. They don't get any joy. Poor Advocate Raiders is sitting to, at 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night, sometimes 2 o'clock in the morning, and he answers WhatsApp messages, trying to assist people just because the system is not working. So frustration, yes, absolutely. In the paper that was issued to the South African um, Commission uh, in 2014, some of that, I just want to highlight a couple of things that they discussed there. Number one, they said they should be investigating Saturday courts for maintenance and other related matters. Hallelujah. Isn't that a brilliant idea? But you know what? What has been done since 2014? Nothing. Nothing. We still don't have courts on Saturdays. We still don't attend to people after hours. Urgent cases. We still don't do that. Introduction of mediation uh, services for maintenance matters. Has that been done? No. Um, facilitating skills training for maintenance line managers and frontline personnel. Has that been happening? No, we still get rude people. We still get people, magistrate, uh, maintenance officers, maintenance investigators, maintenance clerks, being rude, being disrespectful. Appointing of additional maintenance investigators over a period of three years. Not one was appointed. Not one. Why? Because the government doesn't have money. They don't have money, but they've got 22 million to spend on a flag. But they don't have they don't have money to allocate towards maintenance. And the list goes on and on and on and on. That was in 2014. And then I started just to, to add to my frustration and my aggravation, I started reading up on this district the strategic planning, the strategic plans of the DOJ since 2014. And if you ever wanted a, to read up on a horror story, do that. Because they started off very nice. They started off with brilliant ideas. 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18. They all mention all the problems. They just regurgitate each and every time all the problems of the past. But nothing has been done to it. On the latest, the latest one in 2020 to 2025, there was only mention six times of maintenance. Six times maintenance were issued, were, were mentioned. Sure, they jumped on the bandwagon of GBV and they tried to mask that and they tried to incorporate maintenance to dilute maintenance and focus more GBV than maintenance, which is wrong because it's two different issues. The one leading to the other one, they're all intersected. Yes, most definitely. But don't try and dilute it from a GBV side. On the um, strategic plan in 2020 to 2025, this was quite interesting, where they said that maintenance and other issues related to children are of a major interest to the department. Right? 
While major improvements have been done in the process related to maintenance applications, the department plans to improve speed and efficiency in finalizing maintenance orders. Really? Really? What has been done? What has been done with regards to this? This was published in 2020. What has been done in two years' time? Nothing. Nothing. The problem that we set now is that, you know what? You can sugarcoat a piece of shit, but you can't call it a chocolate. Do you understand my frustration? That is what, that is what we are being dealt with at this stage. Sorry about my, my swing. I get passionate. I get, I get angry. I get angry. And you know what? Education is knowledge. We should educate ourselves like we do right now. We should know our rights. We should know what is our rights, what are our recourses, so that we can take those type of people to task, hold them accountable. I've been in an office of a, ma of a maintenance officer, uh, which is not in the, the, the area, it's a little bit farther up, I'm not at liberty to say, because the case is still pending. Um, and you know what she said? I, I stood in and I listened to a conversation between her being rude to a complainant. And she said, but you know what? And the complainant actually said, you know what? I'm paying your salary, so you should listen. Okay, the comeback on that was, you know what? You pay my salary, I'll give you an increase. Okay. So, so that, that didn't work out quite well. But that is the mentality that we have at this stage in the courts. And that's totally wrong. Totally wrong. So what is the action plan? We do have activists, a lot, fighting for maintenance, fighting for children's rights, fighting for rights of mothers. That's on the one side. And they should take on government. But to take on government is like fighting with both hands tied behind your back. The other way that we could do it, we should have a two-pronged approach from the bottom up and from the top down. From the bottom up is the normal public. It is you and I. It is the attorneys. It is, it is the complainants. We need to know our rights so that we can tell the maintenance officer and we will be able to stand up and tell the magistrate, you know what, I do not agree. I do not agree with this ruling because this is the law. This is what the, the DOJ code says. This is what the regulations say. So that you can stand up on your rights. And as soon as you do that, they start backing off and say, but you know what, listen, you know what you're talking about. That is what we need to do. We are in the process, childmaintenance.org.za, we are, we are in the process of creating a complaints forum where complaints could be submitted via the portal directly to courts. My aim, my personal goal for the end of this year is to have 80,000 complaints. I don't want to print it out in 27 boxes, I don't want to dump it at Parliament. I don't want to tell them, listen, you attend to these queries now, because you're not doing anything. That is the goal. That is the goal that we want to do. So like I said, there's an action plan. Do it from the top, bottom, and the, to put strain and to put um, the responsibility on government to listen to the public. That is what we need to do. But it all starts with us being here listening online, trying to educate ourselves so that we know what are our rights, what can we stand up for, and then proceed from there and make a change in your own case for that to go further. There's a couple of basic rights. You've got your first generation rights. Those are the rights that actually protect us, the public, from the abuse of the state or other powerful entities. And those are freedom of association, freedom of speech, freedom of religion. Those are the first generation rights. Then you also have the second generation rights, which, is, which are also called the, the positive rights. Those are the socioeconomic rights, which requires the state to provide something. Examples of that would be the right to health care, sufficient food and water, right to education, right to access to courts, and, and, and so forth. And then we look at Section 28 of the Constitution. Maintenance, although it is a gender-neutral 
format. Because we, in, in layman's terms, we, we say that we talk about the applicant or the complainant as the mother because about 98% of it is so. The, the mother is the, is the complainant. But it is gender neutral because I also have clients that are dads wanting to claim maintenance from the mother. It happens. It happens. Paramount to all of this is the best interest of the child. It is all about the rights of the child, which is found in Section 28 of the Constitution. And the child has certain rights. We're talking about rights. We're talking about rights of, of, of you as a parent or the parent. And, but there's also the rights of the child. And the child has a right to family care or parental care, basic nutrition, shelter, uh, health care services, and to be, to, to be protected from neglect and malnutrition. Those are all the rights that the children have. It is also contained in a statutory provision in terms of Section 15 of the Maintenance Act. So that the legislator actually went further and he said, but you know what, apart from the basic right that you have in terms of the Constitution, it's also enacted in Section 15 of the, of the Maintenance Act, where it says that a maintenance order could be, could be obtained for the maintenance of a child, and it is directed to the enforcement of the common law duty of the father. The father has a common law duty to support his offspring. If he likes it or not, that's his common law duty. And then section two, subsection two, says that, you know what, this basic right of this child includes proper living and upbringing and includes the provision of food, clothing, accommodation, medical care, and education. It's not something that you have to beg for. It is not something that you have to, have to stand in a queue for months on end at a magistrate court begging to be helped. This is your right. This is what you can expect. This is what you can put in your complaint as the basis of your complaint. So like I said, once you have certain rights, you also have a complaints procedure. Because you need to enforce your right. And there's a clear distinction between a legal recourse and a non-legal recourse. What is meant by that? One should remember that the judiciary, the magistrate or the judge listening to your matter is exercising a judicial discretion in terms of the law. And that is protected in the constitution, the, the unbiasedness of the courts. So we have to distinguish between what is done in court and what is done outside court. So there's a process that the maintenance officer follows, the maintenance investigator, the maintenance clerk. That's separate from the orders that the magistrate <coughs> gets. And your recourse and your rights of complaint differs between the two. So there should always be a clear distinction about <coughs> things that happen outside of court and things that happen inside of court. Just bear that in mind. We'll come back to that now. Now, Let's talk about the process of complaints. You'll find at all magistrate courts, there are boards put up like this on the slideshow. And it indicates the court manager, the area court manager, the director of the court operations, and also the regional head. I would urge people listening online, people sitting here, if you have a maintenance matter pending, the first thing that you should do is take a photo of that. Take a photo of that board, because I can guarantee you, at one stage, you'll need it. Take a photo thereof. Take your cell phone, take it out, take a photo. We are busy compiling a database of all this information countrywide. And that also links up to our complaints procedure. Um, we would ask you guys to WhatsApp that photo to this number there, or to email the photo thereof um, to info at childmaintenance.org.za. The reason for that is so that we don't have to contact each and every court again uh, to duplicate that so that we expedite the process. So if you do have that, or if you attend to court, if you, if you need to be in court during the course of the week, please do that. Send it through to us. 
um, we'll attend to that. So what is the compliance procedure? Now you have the magistrate court, what is your first recourse? You need, to, you need a format or a way to complain. So the first line of defense would be the court manager. That is the person responsible for the general workings of the court, and it's basically an administrative post. If you do not get any joy from the court manager, you can escalate the matter to the area court manager. No joy there, then send it through to the regional head. If you still don't have any joy there after a period of time, then you can send it through to the national office, the complaints manager at the uh, Department of Justice. Or you can employ the services or ask for the intervention from the public protector. Now, a while ago, we started off by, by making available a, a portal where that you can lodge your complaint directly to the public protector. They were inundated with complaints. They had about 4,000, 400, sorry, 400 complaints within a couple of days. So that is the seriousness thereof. Our suggestion would be to email, because now remember you have the details of, the, of, the, of all these people, the court manager, the court, area court manager, as well as the regional head. You have beforehand, because you've taken the picture at court. So you have the details, you have the email address. So what we suggest is that you email those complaints. Just don't hand it in, because you need a copy. You need a trail of evidence to prove that you submitted those complaints, to follow the, the hierarchy of complaints. Because like any other justice system or any government system, they work in terms of hierarchy. The one is just more important than the other one. They all get the paycheck from high above, but they, they just feel in, in terms of the hierarchy. And I, I, I've been there. I've, I've, I've been in the Department of Justice or against justice. I've been there. I've been a prosecutor and I've been a magistrate. So I've been there. I know how the hierarchy works. Um, the suggestion would be that you, the first of line would be to file your complaint with the court manager and give them five days to respond. If they do not respond in five days, which they never do, you escalate the matter to the area court manager and copy in the court manager as well. Because now the one, the superior one at top, would know that the one down below is not doing a job. And then you go on, and then you copy in the regional head. If a matter is seriously serious enough, copy in the whole grocery list of people. Go for it. Go for it. So that they all know what's going on. So if you need to understand where does your rights fit in? Because there's there's a couple of there's there's a load of rights that's that's at play here. There's, I calculated that there's about 800 rights that you could have in terms of the Maintenance Act, in terms of the regulations, uh, in terms of the DOJ code. So there's there's a lot of rights, and I'm, I am only highlighting certain aspects thereof. And I've divided it into four sections. The first one would be the application phase. That is outside of court, so it's not inside court, so you would have a hierarchy of complaints procedure. The application phase, and we'll discuss this in a little bit more detail in a while. So it's the application phase, it's the investigation phase. The application phase is where you get the documents ready and you proceed to lodge your complaint at court before it's even heard. So that's the application process. After that is the investigation process where the the maintenance officer gives direction to the maintenance investigator to attend to that. And they've got certain duties uh, that they need to fulfill in terms of the DOJ code. And then you would have your informal section six inquiry. Very important there is the role of the maintenance officer, because it's usually here where the problem starts. The problem usually starts, it starts escalating from bad to worse to detrimental in the Section 6 process. Um, it's usually in the Section 6 phase where you also have the legal advisors of the opposing party present and you are being subjected to bullying by legal representatives. And I'll talk about that in a while. 
Um, and then we change from the, from the Section 6 inquiry to the more formal Section 10 inquiry, which is done in court. Remember now, your complaints procedure of things happening in court is different than the hierarchy of complaints, which I just explained. Court manager, area court manager, regional, whole grocery list, list of people. In terms of, of, of the formal Section 10 inquiries, which is done in court, that is an appeal or a review procedure, which we'll get to in a moment. Now I want to talk about the DOJ code, codified instructions, code, family courts, maintenance. We just call it the DOJ code 26. And a while ago, some of my colleagues started to distribute this amongst the public. And we were also made aware of that by some of the personnel of the NPA that, that gave us the information. And I read through it very meticulously. And because I also felt that, you know what, it might not be a good idea because giving this out to people might not be the best interest. Because you would get this, you would, you would, you would have this to your disposal and once you go to court, you, if you quote this, then you're going to have loads of resistance and you might be victimized. So I read through the DOJ code and I'm going to refer to, to certain sections thereof. Section 3, one says that this code is available or applicable to all the offices of the department, which includes maintenance. 4.1, very important that non-compliance of the DOJ code could amount to punitive actions being taken. Very important. Here it says, black and white. The DOJ code is a prescriptive guideline issued to all the personnel of the Department of Justice. And they, it's like their Bible. They have to abide by that. Those are the rules that they need to play with or within. Section 6, one thereof says that a hard copy must be in the library at the courts and the maintenance officer and the maintenance clerk should also have a copy thereof. You know that 90% of the courts that I've attended to, and I ask them, do you have a copy of the DOJ code? I just want to make sure of something. They don't even know what it is, but they were appointed by the DOJ. They signed that they read it, so we can keep them to it. And then very important, uh, section 6.1, where it says that, you know what, the DOJ code does not contain any confidential instructions and is accessible to everybody who might have an interest in that. Wonderful words. words. We can distribute it. We can splash it all over. Because this is not a private document. If you have an interest in a maintenance case, then you can use the provisions of the DOJ code. As, bottom, as, as clear as that. Please bear in mind that the DOJ code is just a prescriptive guideline. It is not the law. So you cannot stand in court and quote the DOJ code. You cannot, because the magistrate would look at you and think you are from Mars or from wherever, because he's never heard of it, because he's not bound by it. It is not a ruling, it's not case law. It's not enacted in any way. But for you to exercise your right, you can use this. This would be your, your tool that you could use to, uh, to, to lodge a complaint or to draft a complaint. So let's just quickly run through a couple of, 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 of the rights that, that I identified as quite important. First of all, the court hours are irregular. We've had a case now of matter in Simonstown, I think, where there was a poster on the door where it says maintenance will only be done, or maintenance inquiries will only be done from 8 or from 9 to 1 every day and not on Fridays. What utter, utter, utter bull. It's not true. It's not, it's not happening. But yet we see that each and every day. Section 34 of the Constitution says that you have a right to access to courts. 
That's your constitutional right. Why are they taking that away from you? You can use this in your complaint. Section 3 of the Magistrate of the Maintenance Act says that every magistrate court shall, within its area of jurisdiction, be a maintenance court. So why should the maintenance section be singled out? Why? Because it's also considered to be a court in terms of Section 3. If you have these type of complaints, you can escalate that in terms of the hierarchy process, which I explained, area manager, court manager, court manager, area manager, regional, and then escalate it. And if that happens, you can copy in advocate writers as well because he'll kick some serious odds. Because that is totally wrong. That is an infringement of a basic right. Absolutely. If there's no person now in the maintenance officer office to assist, we get that often. They pitch up, they stay there for 10, 15 minutes, and once you stand in the office, you just wait. And it's a hurry up and wait game. Not on. They are employed like most of us are, and they get a salary to do a job. They have to be there. If you are in a process where you have to sit for the whole day and you are not being attended to because there's no personnel available, they are somewhere in the building, probably on Facebook or wherever, WhatsApp to their friends, but not in the office doing their job, then insist on a Section 11 and Regulation 5 subsistence and allowance voucher because you can. You're very much entitled to that. Root personnel, we get that all over. It's a balancing act, people. I've seen maintenance officers sitting in a small little office being exercised to one portion of the court, probably a prefab building getting very hot in, in summer and very cold in winter because no one wants to deal with maintenance. It's like your gate check steps child in jail. Nobody wants to talk about that. Nobody likes that. They don't want to talk about that. They don't like it. So I see the, the personnel and I, and, and, and I work with them quite a lot and I see the frustrations that they have. It should be discouraging if you go to your work, wherever you might work, even if it's an attorney, and you come to your office and you look out the door and there's 40 people waiting for you. Would that be discouraging? Yes. Remember now, the whole maintenance arena is an emotionally loaded arena. So once you have the people in, you get the husband and you get the wife together, there will be spots. But it's up to the maintenance officer to keep control. And you know what? It's not always possible. They are also just human. They have a family as well. So it's a balancing act of, you know what, having some form of sympathy with them, but also to make sure that they do their job. happens is, and this is the rule that we saw quite often, is that you ask to complete the form and just hand it in in court. Fill in the J101 form and then you just hand it in, in in court. No, absolutely not. You can complain about that uh, in terms of the DOJ Code 15.2 says that the clerk of the court must assist you to complete the form. That is your right. You can insist that they assist you to complete the form. It is not the task of the security at the court to fulfill the obligations and the duties of the maintenance officer or the maintenance clerk. Not at all. You know what? It is your right to complain about that. Escalate the matter. We see that very, very, very often. Once you submit your forms to court, most people are turned away on the first instance because they simply do not have the right documentation. It's not been explained to them. They don't know what to expect. They just know that they want to file for maintenance. They need to go to court. And this is the documents that they think the court would need. And then the clerk of the court t turns them away and says, but you know what? Your case will not be heard. Um, it's not ready yet. Yes, sure. There is a responsibility in you as the complainant to ensure that all your documents are ready. Because no one else is going to do that. So you have to do it uh, on yourself or by yourself. There's some form of responsibility upon you to gather your own evidence. But, but, the clerk of the maintenance court should make no decision 
on the demerits or merits of the person. So the maintenance clerk cannot turn you away and say, but you know what, up until now, even though you do not have all the documentation, they cannot send you away and say, you know what, you don't have a case. Come back when you get everything right. If you file a complaint, use this specific section of the DOJ Code 15.3 in your complaint, stating that you were turned away by the maintenance clerk and she made a decision on the merits or the demerits of the case. That would be your defense. Turned away because they don't have ID documents. Very, very, very specific section 151, where it says that no applicant would be turned away because they do not have a ID with them. Enforce this, enforce this. This is your right. You can, you can complain. The file went missing. Oh, my word, how many times have we heard that? I don't think it's the Department of Justice, it's the Department of Search. Because they're forever looking for files. If I go to court and I ask the maintenance clerk, you know what, why don't you just please draw me this file? I say a silent prayer with loads of expectation that that would miraculously appear. And about 90% of the times, they say, they can't find the file. It's not my problem. It's not my problem. It's their filing system. In terms of Section 31, the clerk of the maintenance court must keep a record of the movement of the file. So if she takes the file to read in the loo, there needs to be a note on the file who took the file, when, where, when it will, will it be returned? There should be a register of movement of files. So there should be no reason whatsoever, none, why file goes missing. I reiterate that there should be no reason whatsoever. They've got all the systems in place. No file should go missing. I explained the security that takes over the, the roles. Now we come to the investigation phase. We, we, we spoke about the application phase. Now we come to the investigation phase. The duties of the maintenance officer. What happens quite often is that all the documents are submitted to court or to the maintenance officer, and you expect a date at a later stage. Okay. And then you expect a date um, at a later stage. Um, it is up to the maintenance officer that must establish if there is sufficient information contained in the file to actually proceed with the matter. It also speaks about the delays um, in, the, in the matters uh, governed by Section 17.1 and 17.5. Um, those are all contained in your handout. I suggest what you do is instead of going through each and every one of them, that you go through them. It is very, very, very detailed. And those are the things that you could use in your, in your, in your complaint. Um, record keeping. Yes, there should be record keeping of each and every note, every evidence, every form, every document that was submitted in the application needs to be filed. It's in terms of section 22.4 of, um, of the DOJ code. Um, this is just all that I've already spoken about, the investigation phase, um, handed in court, not, but not in court file. Uh, that speaks to record keeping as well. I'm not going to, into much detail with regards to that. That's all. Um, Respondent not giving all details to the maintenance officer or the or the court. This happens quite often. You go to court, you know what, you need to prove to court and say, I want maintenance. I have a case made out, I want maintenance. And then there's reliance upon you to submit evidence from the father's side to say that, you know what, he does have a car, he does have a house. But sometimes you don't know that. You don't know. You, you are not privy to his bank accounts. There is a procedure in the Act and we dealt, that previous, we dealt with that previously in previous dialogues, there is a procedure where 
those banks could be subpoenaed. Everybody that has an interest or can shed some light on the financial affairs of the father could be subpoenaed to court. Why is it not being used? Why? The Section 6 inquiry, yes. Um, in terms of the Constitution, Section 32, you are well within your rights to ask for the details of your file. Some maintenance officers keep the details of that file better than a state secret. No one is allowed to access that file, which is absolute rubbish. In terms of Section 32 of the Constitution, you are allowed to have access to that. It is not a guessing game. It is a civil procedure or akin to a civil procedure where it is full disclosure of all parties' financial affairs, which means your affairs, as well as the father's affairs, needs to be disclosed, and you have the right to have access there too. Again, we talk about the files that's going missing. Um, recently, we also saw that some of the orders, some of the orders that I saw were signed by a maintenance officer. That's totally wrong. That is not considered to be a valid court order because it needs to be signed by a magistrate in terms of Section 32.3 of the uh, DOJ Code. Where there's not a maintenance officer available, you see that also. Maintenance officer is not available or the court do not have an appointment maintenance officer. If the maintenance officer is not there, then you know what also spot to speak to the public prosecutor because the public prosecutor in terms of section 4 what is deemed to be a maintenance officer so you're allowed to do that that's one of your rights um i'm not going into detail with this this is just about the arguments that a respondent might have other children um so he cannot afford that uh, section 15 4 of the Man maintenance act clearly says that one child does not take preference over the another these are all in the handouts, and I would suggest that you read through this and you use that for your, uh, for your complaints procedure. Um, then we come to the formal, we're nearly finished, uh, the formal section 10 phase, the failure to appear by the respondent after being served properly. If the matter was set down, it was properly served in terms of the DOJ Code 26, and it was properly served. The maintenance officer in terms of section 20, or portion 26.3 of the DOJ Code must ensure that the method of the service was written on the documents, on the file. So they should say, you know what, it was, it was done by WhatsApp, it was done by fax, it was done by the sheriff, it was done by the police. So there should be a note. So you would know where's your file right through the whole process. Um, just to get back to that one, if a respondent fails to appear on the date that was set down for the inquiry, inquiry and it was duly served, there was enough evidence that it was duly served, then the maintenance officer must apply for an order by default. I see in practice what they do is they just issue a warrant of, of, of arrest or they just give you another date, which is wrong. You can, in terms of, of Section 21, 26, 1, you can insist that a default order be made. Returns of service is a long list of rights that you have, and I would suggest that you read through that. That's contained in Section 31, uh, 1 to 31, 8 of the, of the DOJ code. I'm not going through that. Now we get to the formal phase, the Section 10 inquiry, which is in court. Remember now, like I said, if it's in court, then your only recourse there would be a, a review or an appeal. Uh, Section 18.1 of the Maintenance Act says that if in a maintenance matter, any person is unsatisfied, then he could appeal the matter. Uh, that's Section 25, sorry. Then the matter could be taken on appeal. Transfer of files we also have a problem with. There's certain provisions in the DOJ code that you would need to be notified and the, the, the procedure that needs to be followed once you transfer a file from one jurisdiction to the other. Please read this because we see that quite often and people are still frustrated because they don't know. Files take six, eight months 
a dove takes four days, but why should the postal service to take nine months? I mean, it's ridiculous. This is the this is the this is the portion then that you could use in your in your, in your complaint. Legal representation. Um, yes, we spoke about that. If you are, if you feel that you are being bullied in court by a legal practitioner, attorney like myself, I, I don't get any complaints. But yes, um, the matter needs to be escalated to the LPC, the Legal Practice Council. It's, you are well within your rights to lodge a formal complaint because they also have an ethical duty to act professionally and responsibly and in the best interest of the child even though they represent the respondent. So your recourse there would be to lodge a formal complaint at the LPC. Bullied by the legal practitioner, as I said, report the matter to the LPC. I can also just refer you to the case of, oh, Anna Mutimunye. Omar, Omar Anna Mutimunye. And that's a nice, that is, that, is, that is something that you need to put in all your complaints. In this case, this poor Omar, it was somewhere in Mpumalanga. Bjorn knows the, the, the case off by heart. I think he's, he's on speaking terms with Omar and Namute Munye. But there was a comedy of errors that happened in court. A total comedy of errors. And the maintenance officer, the maintenance investigator, did not do their work. And Omar and Namute Munye approached the courts. And she sued the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development, as well as the maintenance clerk and the maintenance officer in their personal capacity. And she won the case. She won the case. It's, at this stage, it's an unreported case, and it was by Judge Instra. A very good case to have. Um, it is available on the, on the website www.childmaintenance.org.za. In the top right hand corner, you'll see a portion for public. There's a public library where this case is available. Appeals, those are done in terms of Section 25 of the, of the, of the uh, maintenance, maintenance Act, um, where it says that you know, if, you take it, if you take the matter of appeal, the High Court can make any order that it deems fit. But, very importantly, the court will not, or it does not mean if you lodge an appeal against a maintenance order, for whatever reason, it will not suspend the payment of maintenance pending the finalization of the, of, the, of the maintenance order. Orders that are not appealable. This is also very important to note. Orders that are not appealable. So you cannot appeal to this even though it was handed down by a magistrate. Orders by consent. So if you consented to a certain order, you cannot appeal to that. That's just counterproductive. Why would you consent then and not uh, and not appeal to it. Uh, orders to pay for DNA tests in terms of Section 21, and then certain default orders in terms of Section 18.2. Those are all orders that you cannot appeal. Orders that are indeed appealable, those are or any order that deals with the discharge, the setting aside, substitution, variation, increase, decrease, all those that were granted, those are appealable. Um, I'm not going into the complete detailed process of, of the appeal. Um, I'll leave that to Advocate Mohammed to explain a little bit more how that works. He, he deals with that each and every day. Um, but yeah, so for, 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 for mentioning Regulation 50, where of the regulations of the enacted in terms of the Maintenance Act, where it says that the appeal should be noted within 20 days of the order, and if you have a cross appeal within seven days after that. But that's technical details. Appeals and reviews are quite technical. Um, Advocate Muhammad will probably touch on that um, and as well as Advocate Raiders. Um, this is just, just the, the, the graphic on appeals, which I will not discuss now uh, because we're running a little bit short of time. But it is in the handout and it is available um, for that. Thank you, guys.